So it's so appropriate for my guest today. It's appropriate to have Mr. Ira Rosen. You will never get a hosen from Mr. Ira Rosen. <laughs> it's appropriate to have Ira here today as our guest because this man has over 50 years. Okay, I'll be 50 in one whole year. He's got me beat in life years with sales experience. This man has 50 years of sales experience. He is a closing master. Now, how does one become a closing master? Understanding the art of communication, understanding the process. Many of you have been on a lot of our trainings, a lot of our happy hours. We've had a lot of our friends like Omar Perry with Investigative Selling, right? There is a process to selling. And once you understand it and you come to terms with it and you get comfortable with it and you start having conversations, it's no longer selling. It's no longer selling. So, hey, guess what? Knock, knock, knock. If nobody ever told you that you need to sell as an agency, well, I'm here to tell you you do. Or you hire those that can around you. But guess what? Some of us are forced to just do the selling ourselves and people are ready to buy right now. People are ready to pay two, three, four, five thousand dollars an app, even higher. You guys have seen the posts, you've heard the stories, you've watched the webinars. All we got to do is sharpen the tools. And today you're going to learn how to master the one call close from Ira. You're going to learn how to sell. You're going to learn how to persuade. You're going to learn how to influence and close like a badass. <laughs> you're going to how never to hear, I got to think about it, or send me a proposal, or get ghosted ever again. I know you guys are familiar with that all too well, right? There are ways to prevent that if you understand the process. So today, we're just going to break it down. We're going to make it real simple for you to understand. My great guest, great friend, Mr. Ira Rosen. I'm so excited to have you with us, Ira. You know, you've been an inspiration to me and a lot of my peers. We've masterminded together for now 10 plus years. You know, we get together all over the country. We get your wisdom. Every time I'm in the room with you, my notebook leaves full. I, I always enjoy your wisdom. So the fact that you're willing to come on and share some of this with the Go Mobile community, man, warms my heart and everyone will know why by the end of this. So thank you so much, Ira, for joining us. Say hi to your Go Mobile community. Hey, hey everybody. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, Damien, I love you. Uh, I love what you do. I love your energy. That's why people um, really are drawn to you because because everything is about everything is about energy and vibration, everything. And when you're talking to a client, a prospect, you, your energy has to always be higher than theirs. You know they can feel you through the phone. All right, or they can feel you through a Zoom call. So I just want to start with that initially because Thank you, you know every, everything is energy and vibration. And when you get on a call, you know you've got it's kind of like make believe you're playing in the Super Bowl. You don't just show up on the field and just there you are. You get your head right. So it all starts with you know with your mindset. All right, so mind it all starts right away with mindset. Okay. Mindset is everything because I can give you all these different, you know, all, all kinds of tactics and strategies, but your mindset is everything. So what you want to be able to do is every morning, and this is what I do, you got to have, you know, rituals and habits that take you there. You know, um, I think this is really important. Uh, Damien, I know you do this, but, you know, you want to get up in the morning, you want to get your head right. You want to be real clear on your day, where you're going to go, what you're going to do. I like to make a, I like to make a little um, mental note or write it down the night before. What are the top three to five things I want to do the next day? And the key is focus. Focus right now is a new currency. People are all over the pace. The last two years, we've been pulled in a thousand directions every day. And so he who is the most focused, you know, always wins. So, you know, have your rituals, your habits. Get clear on your day because when you go into a selling situation, your mind has to be clear. You have to be focused. You cannot be distracted. Your energy is really important, and you can't have a whole bunch of other things on your mind when you go into there. And you got to be, you got to really understand what is that client. You, you need to know about your client before you get on a call with them. You know. Who are they? What do they? What do they want? And the key thing here is, when you start talking to people, is 
the connection. And I'm telling, it's a lot of the stuff you've heard before, but I'm going to give you some stuff you've never heard before. You know, the connectivity, trust is everything. If they don't trust you, you could have a great product, a great service, but if they don't trust you, you know, it's no sale. What they're going to tell you is send me a proposal. I got to think about it. I got to talk to my wife. I got to run it by my partner. I know no one here has ever heard that. So the key is connection and make it all about them all about them. And here's a hard rule to follow, the 80-20 rule, where they're talking 80% of the time. That's not an easy rule to, to follow, but you know, it's every time they talk, they're telling you how to sell them. So you want to be a great listener, you want to have great questions. And so what you want to be able to do here is become their, you know, really build that rapport and become their new best friend very quickly because they're going to make a judgment in the first say three to five minutes whether they're even going to do business with you three to five minutes and that first impression is everything a smile on your face is everything because people will mirror and match you i, I pay very close attention to body language and when i'm in a zoom call i'm on zoom calls all day long i love it it's fun um i just you know, I, I, I just enjoy it. I meet so many great people. But I notice when I smile on a Zoom call and I'm paying close attention, they smile right back. Or if I do some kind of body movement, they will mirror me. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. But, you know, have a smile on your face. Your, you know, sound when you talk to somebody initially, because that first three minutes is so important, is it's kind of like if you're welcoming someone into your home. They come, you're having a party. It's like, hey, Damien, how are you? Come on in. You know, or like, hey, you know, David, I'm glad I'm glad we're on this call right now. Where are you coming from? You know, with that kind of energy, you know, Damien, that's one of Damien's superpowers is his high energy. This stuff is contagious. People love it. And what happens is people love to work with people that are confident. If you're not confident, you better find out a way to get confident really quick because your ability to persuade and influence, and I really like those words, persuade and influence, because nowadays the word sales, when people hear the word sales still, a lot of people, it has a negative connotation. So, uh, you know, influence and persuade. And if you haven't read the book, The Power of Influence and Persuasion by Dr. Robert Cialdini, um, I'd highly recommend it. Actually, you can Google it. And there is a 11 minute video that is uh, is the whole book in 11 minutes, and it's really well done with all his pillars. But he talks about the art of persuasion and influence, and all the all the pillars that go into all that. So, how do you get the 11 minute version of that? I'm sorry, I missed that part. The what? How do you get the 11 minute version of that part? Yeah, just Google um, the power of persuasion and influence. Okay. It'll pop right up on YouTube. Awesome video. You'll love it. But what he gets into the whole psychology, because when you're talking to somebody, you are dealing with their, their conscious mind and their subconscious mind. You really are. And there's so much. I'm going to drop some stuff on you right now you might not have heard before. David's heard this and Damien's heard this before. But when you're communicating with somebody, you know what you're going for, you've got to trigger emotion. All right? That's nothing new. You guys have heard that before. Uh, you enroll on emotion. Or, you know, pardon? another word for close is enroll, right? You enroll on emotion. Exactly, exactly. And then, then they're magnetically drawn to you because um, when emotion overrules, overrides logic, you have a sale. Now, um, here's the thing. We make all decisions based on emotion but we justify with logic. Now, here's something I'm going to drop on you you've never heard before. I know you have it because it's all original. PAC, so way back in the 70s, some of you might remember this, there was a thing, um, It was the big thing was transactional analysis uh, back in kind of the hippie movement and all that. Uh, I know David remembers that. I know Damien does. But they talked about, you know, how to read body language and what's going on with people, verbal and nonverbal cues. And PAC, the parent, I think this is so cool, the adult, 
and the child. This is going to give you an expanded uh, perspective of, of people in selling. Now, the parent is when you talk to someone like, hey, you know, don't ever do that again. The adult would be, you know, if you could, you know, you know, if you could maybe next time, maybe try to do this another way. The, and the child is, you know, you're, you're approaching it from a whole nother perspective. But on the parent, when you're selling, like right now, we're talking adult to adult. The key is when you're selling, and a lot of times when you're, when you're coming, coming on to people too strong, it's the parent and you're talking down to them. And that's the worst thing you could do. So what you want to be able to do is summary of all this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it is PAC. You want to hook the child. All right. Hook the child. Why? The child is the one that spends all the money. The child buys. The child, why do I say that? The child is a part of us that gets mad, glad, sad, and it's all emotion. So if you can hook the child, and how do you hook the child? You compliment them. You say their, you say their name to them, sweetest sound of their ears. You hook them with the child. So if you can appeal to the child, you reach to a part of them. You all know what I'm talking about. You know, like Damien does this really well. You, he, grabs, he grabs you and communicates to you a part of you that maybe no one has done in a long time or never. And you're drawn to that. And so the child, it's kind of like the little kid. Um, I was at Toys R Us a while ago, and I was in there with my wife. We were buying some gifts. And this little, this little kid was with his mom, and the mom had a full basket full of toys. And this kid was a little bit out of control. He was about uh, probably three or four. And he says, Mommy, can we buy this toy? She said, Honey, we've got all these toys, and I really can't afford all of these. I really bought too many. And the kid throws himself on the ground and has, has a meltdown. And I, you know, I'm just kind of watching this to see how this, I'm, I was just fascinated by this whole scenario. And the mom, after about 30 seconds, she's, all right, honey. And she puts the toy in the basket. You know, they couldn't afford it, but the kid went nuts. So the child won there. So the child, the child has a lot of power. So anytime you can, it's just like when you're in a dating situation, you meet a gal. If you can get a gal laughing and smiling and entertain her, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're going in the right direction. If you're out with a gal and, you know, you never get a smile out of her. And not, so selling and dating and being with the opposite sex is is pretty much the same thing. There's really not a whole lot of difference. Damien, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, it's it, it's we we had someone on previously that actually used real world examples of that. But I mean, even when I was in school, I was selling the teachers and the principals and everybody, and on, on, you know, it just it all started there for me. But yeah. I agree, it's all the same. It's you've got to you got to appeal to them. I guess you got to appeal to that child, huh? It's for the first time today, actually, here. Yeah, you got you got to, if you sell to the child, you know, the child is the one that laughs, it has fun. The child is the one that, you know, when, when you want to go to a rock concert, that's the child that wants to go, not the adult or the parent. The child, it's like, right now, the child is saying, hey, dude, I've been in quarantine for two freaking years. I want to go out. I want to do something. That's the child screaming. So the child has a lot of power. So I give that example only to better illustrate when you're connecting with people. If you get on a call with somebody and you're on a Zoom call, and at the end of that hour, you didn't get a smile out of that guy. All you did was give him a whole bunch of you give him a whole bunch of facts and you know, and just data, you know, and you know, it all made sense, but at the end, what he's going to say is, you know, something to think about. Send me something, you know, call me next week. And a lot of times they just want to be polite and get you off the phone, but they're not going to buy because, you you know, you've got to, you because here's the thing, when you buy something, whatever it is, whether it's insurance, 
whether it's a car, whether it's going on a trip, uh, you know, you're buying apps, coaching, whatever it might be, you're buying that to get a feeling, a feeling, okay? If you buy insurance, it's the feeling of, pre, of, of having peace of mind, the feeling that you know that your future is going to be more predictable than unpredictable. If you buy a car, okay, this is an easy one. I used to have a bunch of new car dealerships. When you know people don't need to spend a hundred grand on a car, they don't have to. That's crazy. They don't have to. They could spend you know, they could spend ten, twenty grand and get a good car that gives them the transportation. The reason they spend that kind of money is ego, because they get into that car, it makes them feel like a different person. All right. So now you're appealing to their ego. Uh, if someone goes on a trip, the feelings that you're going to, you know, you're going to experience, you know, you get a coaching program, you go through that and the feeling of growth, the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling that you're expanding, the feeling that you're going to actually, um, you're learning more. And then the feeling that, you know, you're going to get more confidence in yourself and become a better version of yourself. So these are things that are really important. Now, when someone, when someone buys buy something, they're buying really the product of the product. Give me an example. Um, you go to the hardware store to buy a drill. You don't need a drill. You need the hole, the hole that the drill is going to make, right? The product of the product. So a lot of times we get confused on that. We just, we get hung up with, with, with features and benefits. And this will kill you every time. And most most sales guys do this. Oh, they, yeah, that will kill you every time. Right? And and what happens is you're so proud of your of your products and services, which is great. But here's the thing. You want it's kind of like an hors d'oeuvre at dinner. You want to give them enough, it just you want to give them just a little bit so they want more. You give them enough information, but not too much. Because if you start doing a data dump on them, you start unloading on them and giving them all this information, their brain cannot process it. And a confused mind will never, ever buy. So you got to give them just enough and you want to make them feel like you're, you're taking them on this little journey and they're, they're basically selling themselves. How do you get someone to sell themselves? Well, by asking great questions questions all right a good sales guy is someone that is is great at asking the right questions if you want great answers you got to ask great questions and you know great you know th then you get into the very beginning i'm bouncing around a little bit but in the very beginning is how you set the stage when you talk to people you know in the very beginning what i like to do is you know warm up a little bit i talk to them you know, kind of break the ice, find out where they're at, tell me a little bit about your business. I don't get into it too much. I say, you know, um, what we're going to do right now is, you know, I would like to find out, learn more about you and your business um, and see if I can see if this is a fit because here comes a takeaway. Because what I do is not for everybody. And this might not be a fit for us. And I pause and I kind of slow it down a little bit. And, and the other thing I'll say is, if I want success for a client more than they do, and I care more than they do, that is not a fit. What did I just do there? I shifted the, I mean, it gave me power to make that kind of a statement. Because now, you know, everyone's got, everyone's got big time FOMO. More than ever. Oh, yes. And so, I'm, you know, it's like, wait a minute, this guy's thinking, wait a minute, I, we all want what we can't have, you know, gain and loss. Avoidance of loss is the number one reason why people will do something. This is the biggest motivator, not gain, but loss of something. And so in the very beginning, what I like to do is set the stage and say, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to go through this a little bit. I'm going to ask you some questions. If I think it's a fit, great. 
Um, if not, I will direct you in the right direction and give you some resources and we'll part as friends. Is that fair? And what happens is if you watch their physiology, it's going to kind of go like, you just took away all the tension and they're a lot more relaxed. Because if you come in there, everyone's being pitched to more now than ever before. And to, to Damien's point earlier about the pandemic and what happened, in a lot of ways, it helped many, many businesses. Because people had to go from old school, antiquated, you know, um, offline marketing to, you know, to what we're, where we're at right now at this moment. And here's what I know for sure. 90, and I tell all my clients this, 98% of everyone's success rate, success rate now is not even how good you are what you do. It's how good you are at telling your story and marketing. It's all about the marketing. What worked two years ago does not work now. So anyways, I set the stage there. So what I want them to do is I want to build rapport. I want to build trust. If they don't trust me, nothing's going to happen. They got to trust me. They got to like me. There's got to be rapport. And then why, why is this important? Because then they will open up and reveal what in the hell is really going on. If they don't reveal to you what's going on, you will not close them. A good question to ask is, what's your biggest challenge right now in your business? What keeps you up at night? What's that one thing that if you could wave a magic wand that you could make evaporate regarding challenges. Um, what is, what is, you know, what are the three things that are holding you back right now? You know, where would you like, here's a great question. Where would you like to be in the next six months with your business? What would that look like? What would success look like? Then you ask them on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest. And this is a great question. How important is that to you? <laughs> Oh, man, that's that's a 10. Okay. How would that change things for you? Well, I could, you know, I could, um, I could get that, I could get that lake home. Wow. I love it. Why would, why is that important to you? Well, my wife and kids, see where I'm going with this? Now I'm getting into, now we're getting real. And after, you know, at the end of at, what's happening is I'm getting to really understand this guy. I'm entering into the conversation that he's having in his head and in his heart and understanding and having, you know, empathy. Empathy is the ability to be able to really get in touch with someone emotionally and feeling and understanding what they're thinking. And what they're experiencing. That's and they call it um, emotional intelligence. And the more emotional intelligence, you know, there's a lot of talk about that in the last couple of years. But the more you are present with that person, you're not distracted. Uh, the higher probability that you know you're gonna, you're going to move it towards a sale. Uh, a lot of times, also, there's great questions you could ask to get rid of objections that would come up ahead of time, depending on what you're selling. But there's great questions. You want to qualify them <clears throat> and see what you have. I'll give an example. If a someone goes to the doctor and they're, they're not feeling well, and the doctor looks at them, takes your temperature, and he says, okay, um, meet me tomorrow morning at, um, at the hospital uh, at 9 o'clock, and we're going to, um, what's that for? Well, we're going to do some surgery. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Surgery? Well, yeah. So there was no diagnosis. So you want to come across as a, as a consultant, not a salesperson. Okay? You're a, you're a fixer. You're a problem solver. You're that guy that people come to when they just – they're up against the wall and they can't figure it out. And you want to position yourself as that guy. And there's all kinds of different things you can do to do that. And part of it is, of course, how you show up. Also, if you're on a Zoom call, what is your 
you know, I, I've been on all, you guys have all been on lots of zoom calls. You've seen guys that you look in their background, my guy that looks like um, world war three back there, just as, you know, there's no thought, um, nothing. It just, and, and if they don't care enough about their background and first impressions, then I got to think, how are they going to treat their clients? And, you know, and how you do anything is how you do everything. So every little thing counts because they're making, they're judging you every step of the way. And you don't want to do a presentation. Okay. You want to do a performance. Big, big difference. A performance. It's it's game time. It's show time. And here's the thing. They're you know who they're what they're really buying. They're buying you. Then they get the product or service for free. They're buying you first, and that's why all the things I'm talking about are really, really so critically important right now. <clears throat> because you know what? If someone is selling an app or coaching or other services, there's thousands and thousands of guys out there that can give that to them. It's very competitive right now. It's relentless, the competition. So it's always in their mind, why you? Why in the hell you? And so you, you, and you, and you really need... Whoops, you really need to have that top of mind. You got to have that top of mind when you're talking to people because you want to you want to really show up uh, where it's it's really like you're an attorney and you got somebody that's on death row and you're trying to save this guy from going to, you know, getting executed. And if you're talking to the jury and you got this poor guy you got this guy's life in your hands. Are you going to be chill? Low energy? Uh, apathy? You know, no enthusiasm? Just kind of monotone? And this guy is toast. Okay? So it's really good to just... You know, and I and I always when I'm when I'm talking to people, I'm having two conversations with them. Number one, I'm having a conversation with them regarding the words I'm saying, but also I'm also doing I'm painting them word pictures or analogies. Okay. Love it, Ira. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend, sir. I love you, brother. Thank you for sharing your time. I really appreciate it.